Hello, welcome to the place on the internet I talk about comics. On the internet does not roll off my tongue very well. Honestly, it's too late in life, but I wish that my parents had put me in some type of speech therapy because nothing rolls off my tongue very well. I, uh, I have friends with stutters. I don't have a stutter. I have a, a mumble, almost. It's very frustrating. Uh, maybe my, uh, my tongue is too big for my mouth, perhaps. Anyway, I look like the valet from Ferris Bueller. I'm always in a different car. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, the fairness and unfairness of a profit-driven um, uh, creative market. If you are of the SPX crowd, uh, that is small press expo, uh, it's often niche work, uh, it often, you know, uh, fixed solely on expression, uh, rather than trying to um, match pop culture trends or, or, or do something uh, uh, necessarily uh, marketable. Uh, if you are in that crowd and you expect to be rich, you're, you're a stupid person. It doesn't mean that people from that crowd can't have great careers or become rich. It just means that presumably you know what you're getting into. It's small press expo. I do the small thing, a uh, 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 home run at some point maybe, but I have to have my own model because what I do is small. I'm not knocking at everybody. There's obviously excellent work that comes out of that scene. I'm a fan of a great uh, volume of it. It's just, uh, uh, it's, and it's being commercial or not commercial is not a judgment in and of itself anyway. So if you're in that scene, maybe you have the self-awareness, some, some don't, but, but if maybe you have the self-awareness to say, what I do is different. Uh, the problem with the direct market, and if you're, uh, if you arrived here, I don't know, not a comic book fan for whatever reason, I sometimes feel like I have to explain these terms. Uh, if you're a direct market comic book creator, that is, uh, you, you exist in the uh, infrastructure of retailers and the major distributors of comics, uh, <clears throat> then uh, you might assume that you've got a shot at you know, the ring. I'm in the game. I'm in the ballpark, at least. I, I, was, <laughs> I was allowed to, to uh, sit and eat a hot dog. I'm in the ballpark. Uh, I can win, right? And I don't want to take that away from you. Uh, it, perhaps you can. But I, I do want to address the idea that perhaps there's a lot, and publishers in their honest moments will tell you this, there's a lot that's just, uh, it's just shelf filler. In music, this was a thing for a long time. You would strike a, if you were a uh, label, you would strike a deal with a distributor that I'm going to have this much material out this quarter, uh, quarterly. Um, and you could strike deals based on it. And sometimes you'd see work that, re uh, like albums that probably should not have come out. Uh, but, uh, there was, th th there was agreements to be, uh, fulfilled. So it's not exactly like that in comics, but y you will see stuff released that seems to be, uh, simply, it simply exists as a reminder that that publisher uh, is active, is uh, f f filling shelf space. It's not meant to win. Uh, great if it does, but it's not meant to win. A, a comparison might be uh, video on demand. Uh, you know, this the material that r arrives in Redbox or video on demand is not meant to win. Uh, doesn't mean it can't eke out a profit. Doesn't mean that uh, sometimes things happen, but. Uh, and most work finds itself in that space that you scroll into Netflix going, I never heard of this in my damn life. What? Malcolm Jamal Warner? What? Uh, John Cusack? <laughs> you know, you're like, like you're going, what are these things? Why have I never heard about this? I, oh, what, wasn't Mel Gibson a star? What, what is this film I've never ta heard about? He, it's about Arbor Day? You know, what I mean? that, that is, uh, kind of an, uh, where most things <clears throat> naturally settle. And what this video is really about is how that's, there's something kind of beautiful to the idea that in, in the pop culture direct market uh, of comic book stores, of uh, Wednesday Warriors, uh, premise wins over name. So... Um, Tom King. Not to pick on Tom King, we don't know each other. Um, uh, uh, this is strictly market shit. Uh, Tom King has been pursuing things uh, in his writing that don't have mass appeal. He's got a massive name, 
but his work has uh, like uh, his uh, his image title doing work that is obviously personal and something he wants to do and he knows is coasting on his name alone does he have any right to feel disappointed that he doesn't get massive sales uh, off the strength of the fact that he's a massive name I mean look if he was Stephen King I think he would be pretty bummed but in comics it's not like that they don't pick it up exclusively on your name or at least you know some people do pick up Tom, uh, Tom King books on his name but for the most part his book will not do as well because it is perceived as uh, obviously something left of the dial uh, that <clears throat> might be even experimental on his part or is scratching an itch creatively and not what people have come to expect from him or necessarily want from him. And I'd, again, I don't know the sales of that book. I'm probably doing fine. But it's just to say it's not a blockbuster and it's not a blockbuster because he didn't provide a blockbuster idea. That's the fair part. A lot of us... Uh, get woe is me about, uh, you know, I've been doing this for this long. I don't have a hit. I have been doing it for this long. I don't, I, you know, my name is, uh, just what my name is. It, it, and I haven't entered that <laughs> strata of, uh, you went to that strata the same way everybody else does. Uh, well, some guys get there by skullduggery and fucking each other over whatever, but really what it is, you make something that connects and as long as a publisher will return your phone calls uh, in the direct market, you have a shot because your premise is, and not even your ability to fulfill it, <laughs> your premise being something that grips people will get retailers to back you. I, um, this is not to knock Jim Zub. Jim Zub has had successes in his career, there is no doubt. Uh, but Jim Zub retailers know what they can expect from him, from his creator-owned work. They know uh, that he has a name uh, at the big two, but it never broke into superstar status. He's not quite a journeyman. He's something slightly elevated from that, but he, he, he yeah, he's working, right? Uh, if he put out an image book with a singularly catchy hook to it, some kind of idea that, that just got in the mind of the retailer first and then the the reader uh it would do great it would sell fucking crazy numbers because he's a capable writer with a premise that connects uh there's a fellow who i won't use his name because uh, i don't think i can without knocking his work he's he's not a good writer but he's had an idea and he had an idea that people jumped onto great mix of art and idea and he hit it out of the park on very marginal talent, right? Now, careers take a long time. Maybe I haven't checked his work lately. Maybe he's doing great. But <clears throat> he, it was all premise. And if you're watching this going, damn, that's stupid. And damn, I hate the reader for that. Yeah, look, I get it. I I, I do. It's fr it, it, I could see the frustration there that you want a track record and you want uh, to turn that track record into sales. Fair. And you do, you do, but it's a baseline of sales. The The majority of your sales, if you have a hit, are going to come from people who, who don't care about your name at all. They care about the premise of, of, of what you're selling. They care about the concepts that you're throwing out there, and they're praying that you deliver on those. And that hope and a prayer is what's going to get you the big sales. Uh, your name, you know, you, you might get one... You, you might get one one thing that you could sell exclusively on your name. But, you know, I mean, look, I'm sure Providence did fine, but Alan Moore's Avatar work probably sold, what would you say, 140th? <laughs> you know what I mean? What his uh, work at some other publishers did? And, and that's in no small part because... Yeah, it's a niche idea. There's something beautiful in comics that we have to uh, continue to appreciate. That is, there's something great in the idea that you could be anyone, and if you if you hit a home run, it it does it it it's they count it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, the, the sales are real. Yes, it is true that the corporate publishers are uncoupled from the profit motive that's my opinion and i think it's bearing out in the in the stores any retailer will tell you 
yeah, the, the Marvel and DC at, at this moment have become unspun from the idea of making uh, making honest dollars. Forgive me, I don't want to get in trouble, but uh, when I say honest dollars, I just mean non-variant, non-collectible dollars. Uh, it, it, it's uh, They're not concerned with reader dollars at this moment. I think that that is objectively bad for the long-term health of the industry. But why am I saying I think? Everybody agrees that that is objectively bad for the long-term health of the industry. So they have become uh, uncoupled from profit, uh, and that is bad. I don't think that we, creator-owned creators, have to fall into that same trap. Uh, we don't answer to corporate overlords. I think that there's still avenues for uh, best idea wins. And I think we have to take advantage of that while uh, the corporate publishers are whatever whatever they're doing. You know what I mean? They're doing donuts on their own front lawn. And it gives us an opportunity to uh, maybe connect with readers Again, sadly, maybe not on our names, but on 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 premise, on expertly delivered concepts that have a, a mass appeal. Which is going to be another video that uh, do as I say, don't do as I do. I think we need mass appeal right now. It's it's an opportunity, an opportunity right now. Uh, you know, while the while the cat's away, I think the mice has got to make a little money. <laughs> so. Uh, Concept, premise, uh, these are the things that win in the market. Uh, presentation, uh, your name is only, if, if your name means 20% of it, that's major, you've got a great name. But for most of us, it, it's one foot in front of the other, you're gonna need a concept. That's, there's something fair there. It's not perfect, but there's something fair.